Yo, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of Those Cast. My name is Vinamrit Kasana. If you are new to our YouTube channel, please subscribe because we release new episodes every Tuesday and Friday at 12 p.m. Indian Standard Time. If you are listening to this podcast on any audio platform, make sure you give us five stars because we're trying to be the best in Bharat. Really trying. Anyway, today's guest is Amish Tripathi. You obviously know him from his famous book, Immortals of Mehluwa, which was a whole series that changed not only my life but all of your lives as well. If you read that book, if you haven't, you should. Uh, I'm going to read out the official blurb. So Amish published his first book in 2010 and has written 10 books both non-fiction and fiction till date including the recently released War of Lanka jiske bare mein humne aaj baat kari we mentioned that a bunch of times and that a dissect whatever we could his books have sold 6 million copies and have been translated into 20 languages inki kitabe bahut hi badhiya hain that have a strong liberal progressive outlook on a rooted pride in india theek hai this is something you'll see in the conversation as well because right now amish has taken over as a minister of culture at the indian high commission in the uk and the director of the nehru center in london right so he's actively propagating our culture abroad now theek hai is conversation ke andar at least for me i was able to understand not only how well read amish is but also how he is able to fearlessly go by the blessings of lord shiva of course into the unknown and extract stories and compose them in episodic novels that all for nation and people abroad can love the episode with the amazing amish tripathi begins in 3 2 1 दरअसल क्या है कि अब घर में सब लोग कहीं ना कहीं जो हमारे हिंदुज़म के कैनन्स हैं ठीक है जो हमारी सेंट्रल कहानी है तो घर के अंदर कोई ना कोई सुनाता ही रहता है इफ़ यू आर बॉर्न इनटू लाइक अ हिंदू हाउस होल्ड राइट लेकिन कंप्लीट uh, वर्जन सुनने के लिए या तो आपको संस्कृत आनी चाहिए या आपको किसी ऐसे विद्यालय में जाना चाहिए जो सिखाते हैं तो आई रिमेम्बर जब पहली बार मॉडल से मलुआ आई थी दो चीज़ें हुई थी एक आई कुड सी शिवा इन अ लाइट दैट was beyond the imaginations of our canonical books number 1 number 2 maine aapke bare mein us time pe padha tha ki amish tripathi india mein dhoom macha rahe hain because inki kitabon ke first chapter ye apne uh, book source ko you, you would basically give out uh, the first chapter of the of the original book uh, and people the book source would then give that out to people who were shopping at the book store and then as a kid i saw the trailer of immortals of malua just the concept the imagination uski jo animation thi wo sab dekha and i got intrigued and i remember distinctly reading the immortals of malua and felt like there is a way in which shiva became a lovable complex character and his family they you made them so accessible that that legacy still lives on so i just wanted to compliment you on that because this podcast has been years in the making thank you thank you, thank you so much vinam you are too kind thank you हाँ तो मैं, मैं बड़ी विनम्रता से मैं बड़ी विनम्रता से विनम्र के प्रशंसा को स्वीकार करता हूँ <laughs> बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आपका मीश जी अच्छा अब आपकी नई किताब आ गई चार किताबें आई हैं जैसे ठीक है जो लंका सीरीज है हमारी आ, उसके मुद्दे के अंदर मेरे को आई वॉन्ट टेक अ स्लाइट पैरल एंड नॉट स्टार्ट देयर बट स्टार्ट विद कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नागास क्योंकि जब मैंने पहली बार वन आई डिस्कवर्ड गणेशा एज अ नागा राइट एंड दैट रेवल्यूशन इवेंचुअली हैपन्स इन द बुक्स I was struck by surprise. You typically, when you think of Ganesha and you think of some of the stories, which are associated with him, it's that one time Shiva ji gave him a blessing, then his head was cut off, then he was put on the altar of Eravat. There are multiple stories, but using Nagas as a concept where there are human beings, there are human beings born with deformities, hmm. and that extends to not only uh, you know Ganesha, but to also Hanuman, also Jatayu. How did you come with that idea? Okay, let's let's take this approach. Brahmra. सत्य क्या है वो तो सिर्फ शिवजी जानते हैं आई डोंट नो व्हाट व्हाट द द ट्रूथ इज व्हाट आई ट्राई एंड डू इज मेरे पुस्तकों के द्वारा कि हमारी जो जो कहानियां हैं हमारी जो धरोहर है इसे अगर एक मिथक रूप में नहीं लेकिन रैशनल रूप से अगर अप्रोच किया जाए तो फिर कहानी क्या हो सकती है क्योंकि तो देखिए ये सिर्फ हमारे प्रथा में नहीं इट्स नॉट जस्ट इन आर्ट ट्रेडिशन ये जो भी एंशंट आइडल वर्शिपिंग नेचर वर्शिपिंग जिन्हें पेगन्स कहा जाता है जो भी उनके कल्चर्स हैं वहां पे आप ये देखेंगे देर आर वेरी ऑफन ह्यूमन बींग्स और गॉड्स विथ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स और वेहीकल्स और हेड्स और फेसेस ऑफ एनिमल्स ये बहुत बार ये सिर्फ हमारे भारत देश में नहीं प्राचीन इजिप्ट में भी था प्राचीन मेसोपटीमिया में भी था प्राचीन केल्स में भी था सब जगह होता था तो एक तरीका ये उसको एक्सप्लेन करने का है कि भाई दिस इज मेटोफोरिकल कि 
आप अगर यू नो अगर गणेश जी का सर जो है वो एक हस्ती की मतलब हस्ती इज संस्कृत फॉर एलिफेंट एलिफेंट का है तो हिज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स विल बी दैट ऑफ एन एलिफेंट की वेरी वाइज वेरी काम Uh, ये एक तरीका है दैट्स मेटाफोरिकल एक्चुअली दूसरा तरीका है इसको समझने का कि मे बी देर इज ट्रूथ इन इट बट वी डोंट नो व ट्रूथ इज आपने देखा होगा कई बार इंडिया में ये कहते हैं कि गणेश जी इज यू नो द रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ अ हेड वाज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ सर्जरी ऑफ यू नो रिप्लेसमेंट ऑफ प्लास्टिक सर्जरी आई डोंट नो दू नो दिडेंट्स ऑफ दैट बट ये आपने ये भी कई बार सुना होगा so another thing which struck me is could it be that actually uh, you know uh, that these are what in the modern day we call deformities in ancient times it wasn't in ancient times it was considered special correct to aaj ke tareekh mein hota hai kai baar ye ki bhai ye chhata agar angootha hai you know there is some actors have today it is considered a deformity mm-hmm. but there were many cultures in ancient times when it was considered ki ये तो भगवान के स्पेशल है क्योंकि तो उन्हें अलग बनाया गया तो कुड इट बी दैट दिस कुड बी दी एक्सप्लेनेशन यू नो फॉर मेनी सच बीइंग्स इन आर ट्रेडिशंस अभी सत्य क्या है आई डोंट नो बट फॉर मी दिस लास्ट थिंग अपील कि कुड इट बी दैट दे वर स्पेशल एंड दैट जस्ट इन आर मॉडर्न डे हम इसे समझ नहीं पा रहे क्योंकि तो हम इतने वेस्टर्नाइज हो गए कि अपने कई चीजों को हम हम खुद वेस्टर्न पैराडाइम से देखते हैं गॉर इट उसी उसके उसी ट्रेल को अगर हम और थोड़ा चेज करें आपकी किताबों के अंदर देर इज अ वेरी हेल्थी डिविएशन फ्रॉम द कैन एंड फ्रॉम द ओरिजिनल बुक्स राइट वेयर द कैरेक्टर्स कैन ब्रीद एंड ऑल्टरनेट तरीके आ जाते हैं उन्हें देखने के नाउ इन द न्यू बुक्स एंड द मॉडल्स ऑफ मलुआ एंड ऑल सब्सिक्वेंट बुक्स डू यू रिफर टू टेक्स एंड देन एट वॉट पॉइंट यू डिसाइड किया दिस इज समथिंग आई विल रिटेन and the rest i will invent do you have a specific process for that uh so i keep it usually up to 57.5% on you know on on text and uh, you know <laughs> 23 i am a maths graduate 23.2% on you know philosophies from the upanishads nahi dekho okay let me let me explain uh, uh the shiva trilogy which is three books Immortals of Malua, Secret of the Nagas, both of the Vai Putras, and uh, uh, Ram Chandra series is Ram Sain of Vishwaku, uh, Sita Warrior of Mithila, Ravan Enemy of Arivata, and the latest one, War of Lanka. Right. So these are uh, the five books supposed to be in the series, but fourth, you can see this as kind of like the end. The fifth is like an epilogue. Is when I do that I because luckily for me, because of my family background, I'm aware of many of the texts. तो मैंने या तो पढ़े हैं या मुझे सुनाया गया है तो कई बार क्या होता है कि स्पेशली आधुनिक भारत में और विदेश में भी जो प्रवासी जो भारतीय हैं कई हद तक जो कहानियां उनके मन में बसी हैं वो कई हद तक आधुनिक टेलीविजन सीरियल पर आधारित है तो जो रामायण आधुनिक स्पेशली शहरी इलाकों में आ, आधुनिक भारत में जो रचना मन में बची है कि ये रामायण है एक्चुअली इट्स बेस्ड ऑन टेलीविजन सीरियल करेक्ट तो आई कुड बी पुटिंग एन इंसिडेंट फ्रॉम द आनंद रामायण विच इज ऑल्सो क्रेडिट टू वाल्मीकि जी इन विच बाय द वे अ वॉर डिड हैपन बिटवीन लॉर्ड दशरथ एंड एंड रावण क्लोज टू द सी एंड आई वॉज इंस्पायर दैट बाई दैट एंड आई पुरट इन माई बुक्स लेकिन ये टेलीविजन सीरियल में नहीं है तो लोगों को ये चलेगा अरे यार ये तो नया है एक्चुअली नया नहीं है ये तो आनंद रामायण से राइट तो कुछ हद तक ये है क्योंकि रामायण के कई वर्णन वाल्मीकि जी के ही तीन रामायण वाल्मीकि रामायण आनंद रामायण अद्भुत रामायण तो जो सीता वॉरियर ऑफ मिथिला है जहां पे सीता माँ को एक योद्धा के रूप में दर्शाया गया है एज अ वॉरियर दैट इज इंस्पायर्ड बाय अद्भुत रामायण ठीक है विच इज ऑल्सो एन एंशियंट वर्जन तो कुछ हद तक ये है क्योंकि अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमारी शिक्षा प्रणाली ऐसी है दैट वी आर नॉट टॉट एनीथिंग ऑफ आर ओन कल्चर यू नो आर एजुकेशन सिस्टम डेस्परेटली ट्राइज टू मेक यू नो यूरोपियंस आउट ऑफ अस 
so we learn very little sadly of our own culture so that is one aspect another aspect is yes there is part of my imagination as well uh and this there has been a rich tradition of this in india again we are not taught so much of our own traditions so we know if you are an educated indian you will know more of shakespeare and tennyson than of uh, kalidasa or thiruvalluvar or bhasa Bha- many of us believe that kalidasa was the greatest sanskrit playwright ever because the british told us that but kalidasa himself believed bhasa was the greatest sanskrit playwright ever he wrote that in his plays so there are plays of bhasa for example which many indians most indians aren't even aware of theek hai bhasa ke aap plays dekhenge to he takes the stories of the ramayana and the mahabharata and interprets them completely differently just like i do to bhasa ka ek bahut hi bahut hi sundar natak hai pancharatra ke mahabharat par aadharit hai jisme yuddh hua hi nahi the war didn't happen changed it completely so what it happened was instead ha huh? what happened instead it was actually how dronacharya spoke philosophical discussions to make peace happen okay mm. uh it's a fascinating uh, play and bhasa is matlab 2000 2500 years ago to bhai kehne ka tatparya kya hai ki ye pratha hamare desh mein sadiyon se chali aa rahi hai ki we look at our ancient stories and reinterpret them why is that and this is one of our ancient sanskrit playwrights had said that truly indian writers truly indian artists for us everything is centered around rama and mahabharat and the puranas hum log sirf isko dekhte rehte hain and we keep putting different interpretations of okay so we are obsessed by the rama and mahabharat and the puranic uh, tales uh and you can't say the same thing again and again so you keep putting different interpretations aur ye hazaron saal se chali aa rahi hai what you pre- what you see in the modern day which happens in bollywood which happens in many things where the stories have no connection to rama and mahabharat and puranas this is what is new in india kyunki aisi to pratha hamari thi nahi we were obsessed with rama and mahabharat and puranas all almost all artists you see kalidasa you see bhasa all of them through all who are they are obsessed with our stories so actually the way i see it i am following what is actually the indian tradition obsession mm. with ramayana mahabharat and the puranas but putting different interpretations wow um so when it comes to bhasa or kalidasa can people who don't know sanskrit can they access their works is they are they available in english or hindi sadly not all some some yes translations are available uh, kalidasa ke aur bhi hain uh but uh, bhasa many of the plays have been lost also sadly and you know in the last 1000 years in the invasions many of the texts were lost frankly uh but there are still texts available so among the things that we can do as modern uh, people is fund translations of these mm. uh, of these uh, texts you will be shocked to know many of our forget about drama Ra- uh, and mahabharata of course why our main puranas our mahapuranas many of them you know have not been translated into english hmm bolie and it's not ki bharat mein paise ki kami hai hame bas ruchi nahi hai isme lanat hai yaar hum pe we are not interested in and these are just our core texts you know we have 3 million uh sanskrit handwritten manuscripts that survive till today according to the national mission of manuscripts that is more than the rest of the ancient world combined angrezon ne hame ek zara sa sara sa jhoot bola कि भाई इंडिया तो ओरल कल्चर था हम लोग तो कुछ लिखते नहीं थे वी डेन नो राइटिंग हम लोग तो बंदर थे अंग्रेजों ने आके हमें बचा लिया किसी तरह ऑल बुलशिट आर एंसेस्टर्स रोट अल ओवर लॉट एंड आर एंसेस्टर्स रोट मोर देन द रेस्ट ऑफ द एंशंट वर्ल्ड कंबाइंड कंबाइंड बट द ट्रू अंडर अचीवर्स वर नॉट आर एंसेस्टर्स द ट्रू अंडर अचीवर्स आर अस who have not acknowledged this this heritage of ours who have not translated many of us aren't even aware that there are so many texts that still survive till today despite the burning of nalanda university takshashila vikramshila mahodayapuram universities across ujjain tanjavur they were all destroyed god knows how many manuscripts were lost despite that 3 million manuscripts survive till today and i've written articles on this for god's sake we need to at least learn Uh, first first let's digitize and translate it 
you know so many of these are actually there we haven't done it we haven't studied them i see yeah it's uh i mean i remember for a fact that when sanskrit is taught in schools it's not taken up by people as much as possible because it's not considered to be the most practical language but clearly a practical uska use to ye hai that you can go back to your roots and understand it's a key from. it's a key to the largest storehouse of ancient knowledge in the history of humanity hmm. the largest storehouse of ancient knowledge in the history of humanity the key is sanskrit let's start talking about uh, the history of knowledge you mentioned ki bahut sare texts exist karte hain typically jab hum log when we at least look at the ramayan right we we see that uh, ravan's motivations depending on which version you follow for sita were primarily driven from lust and desire right in your book it's completely switched on his head where he is in some way attempting to take chase the likeness of her mother her birth mother right so usse main jana chahta hu what is the connection between vedvati and sita and how does ravan find himself embroiled in that so well among the versions of the ramayana that i have read vedvati was uh, you know was someone who ravan tried to possess and she died mm-hmm. and uh, she warned him that she will come back uh, and be the cause of his destruction and she was uh reborn as uh, devi sita this is the story <clears throat> this is there in some versions of the ramayana uh there are versions of the ramayana for example in south east asia in malaysia where they say that ravan looked at sita ma as a daughter it's not in india but it's there in malaysia you know south east asia was also in the right, buddhist right. the kingdom of kishkindha is 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 south east asia so uh, uh no kishkindha is actually uh, what is hampi uh, today okay uh, uh so actually i again this is one of the things i have put in my uh, i did this discovery tv documentary many indians don't know this go to hampi and visit there's a temple there where lord hanuman was born i visited that temple is it the one that where you have to climb uh, like to. a, a, a mountain yes yeah, 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 yes yeah. i have been there so uh, again you know what i said earlier that there are things which there are facts that we know what are the interpretations that could tie this in right now, i don't know if my truth is the truth mm-hmm. it is my interpretation as i said i follow the you know the tradition of so many ancient uh uh you know indian writers who are obsessed with ramayana mahabharata and puranas we keep thinking ki bhai how do we connect these facts that we know so among the interpretations that made uh, sense to me perhaps Uh, is that maybe vedvati was uh, sita ma's birth mother and they were separated and uh, maybe uh, ravan knew vedvati and he wasn't sita ma's father but he knew vedvati was in love with her but vedvati didn't love him she was married to someone else and then he sees sita and sees you know vedvati's mother uh, you know i'm sorry sees vedvati you know sees sita ma's mother could this be an interpretation that would connect what we have seen in some indian versions of the valmiki of the ramayan where vedvati was some versions where vedvati was reborn as uh, goddess sita and some versions in south east asia which say that ravan looked at sita ma as uh, you know uh, as like a daughter right so this interpretation could perhaps connect all those now is this the truth i don't know uh only lord shiva knows the truth but this is my interpretation i see yeah because it it usko and among the things hmm. that said in the bhagavad gita right that more uh, important than the actions are the intentions with which you do those actions uh and uh, i am trying to respectfully explore what interpretation could connect these things and i'm lucky that there are many uh, you know who like this interpretation correct i mean aap agar sir sirf- If you look at Greek mythology, for instance, I have a poster here. I don't know mm. if you can see it. This is uh, the fictional god of war, Kratos, uh, yeah. who took over from Ares, mm. which is the other god of war in Greek mythology, mm. right? Mm. And I've seen that over time, बहुत सारे contemporary writers ने they've kind of modified what a Greek god can do. They've given them emotions that I think were not there in the canons. And mm. as a as a result, इसी वजह से Greek mythology has pervaded our video games. 
mm. our movies right everything else and i think what you're doing is 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 in the same tradition that if you don't take risks and experiment with what these stories could be you run the risk of having the same stories but as as generations change it's kind of hard for people to always access these stories considering how how dense some of them can be Remember the key thing that happens. It's one of the things I always uh, ask: How come our culture is still alive? We are the only pre-Bronze Age culture that is still alive, the only one. And again, we don't look at ourselves enough. Indians look at ourselves through European eyes. So, which is mm. why we believe much of the nonsense that the Europeans told us. You know, our Indians never wrote bullshit, or that the British created India as a country. Again, bullshit. Not true. Actually, the cultural concept of India existed. Uh, there are enough textual evidences for that. Right. Uh, but if we look at ourselves even critically i'm not saying we have to look at ourselves at ourselves positively all the time we should look at ourselves critically too right how come we are the only culture that is still alive on the pre bronze age cultures every single other culture has is is dead egyptian uh, you know uh, the aztecs uh, the aztecs celts mesopotamians the uh, the pagan greco romans they're all dead we are the only mm. one still alive we are the only one still chanting hymns that were composed 8000 10000 years ago okay we are still following rituals that were you know formulated in those days it's you know it it is intense in a way and if you ask many indians ki why is this so you know we just like to no no that's because we are superior or we are you know more attached to our culture that's kind of i don't buy that are you saying that you know pharaonic egyptians that they weren't attached to their culture how the hell did they build the pyramids if they weren't attached mm-hmm. to their culture you know uh if uh, so many there are so many examples like this so how come we are still alive one of my theories is that we are the only ones who can marry liberalism and religiosity uh what do i mean by that that if you if you are so attached to your traditional stories that you can't change them when times change mm-hmm. what will happen is you'll forget those stories right over time that's what happened to the greeks the pagan greeks over time and times changed but the stories of the olympian gods didn't change so they forgot those stories and accepted the traditions of christianity correct oh, that is true uh the zoroastrian persians what happened right uh at times you shouldn't be so adaptable you know sometimes you shouldn't be too rigid sometimes you shouldn't be too adaptable so russian persians i perhaps i think were too adaptable at times you have to fight back right this again we have imported this we have believed this thing that europeans told us with the mahatma gandhi thing etc that we are basically pacifists no we are not we have the oldest pacifist traditions in the world mm mm-hmm. but we also have a tradition of when we have to fight we will fight and we will fight hard such as such as are, are there traditions of war that exists in our mythology in our in our culture not, not going out to conquer other lands but defending ourselves you've seen that in the last 1000 years repeatedly mm-hmm. the zoroastrian persians survived for just 50 years when the arabs attacked they were given refuge in india they survived largely here right Mm-hmm. whereas we have been facing attacks for a thousand years we kept repeatedly fighting we never surrender you lose when you surrender not when you lose a battle you lose when you throw down your arms our ancestors kept fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting mm-hmm. you know king suhail they fought you know when his uh, people lost 100 years later the rajput rose when they lost you know the the marathas rose when or the rayas rose when they lost the marathas so the ahoms rule we kept fighting repeatedly for a thousand years so my theory is that we have that ideal mix of religiosity and liberalism the ideal mix of rigidity and flexibility that when stories have to adapt we'll adapt it so that it becomes relevant to a new age which is what goswami tulsidas ji did with the ramcharitmanas the valmiki ramayana he actually made quite a few changes tulsidas ji but he adapted it to the 16th century put life uh, you know made it relevant to the new generation once again so flexibility when needed but when we have to fight we fight hard we are not the kind who will turn the other cheek when you slap us we'll freaking box you back we'll not slap you first we'll not slap you first but if you slap us we'll freaking box you back right and that has actually been our tradition ideal mix of rigidity and flexibility 
you see that in our stories as well that we will refuse to forget our ancient stories but we are willing to adapt it we are willing to adapt it so that it becomes relevant to a new day once again that's what keeps us alive so that mix of rigidity and flexibility right sometimes when you are too rigid as the pharaonic egyptians were you die out when you are too flexible as perhaps the celts were or perhaps the persians were they died out right had that ideal mix that's what we had talking about that ideal mix i think uh, the je jo version sita ji ka available hai aapki kitabon ke andar where she is shown as a athletic sinewy fierce princess एंड अगर आप और वर्जन को देखोगे तो हर डिवोशन डिवोशन से ऊपर दिखाई जाती है डिवोशन और अनफ्लिंचिंग पवित्र कैरेक्टर को ज्यादा मान्यता दी जाती है बट इन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन योर बुक वी सी काइंड ऑफ काइंड ऑफ फीसनेस इन हर वेयर इट्स ऑलमोस्ट एज इफ जो एनकाउंटर हो रहा है अशोक वाटिका के अंदर बिटवीन रावण कुमकरण एंड सीता स्पेशली इन द इंटेलेक्चुअल डिस्कशन दे आर हैविंग विच इज ऑल्सो लाइक न्यू थिंग शी सीम्स टू हैव द लेवरेज शी सीम्स टू हैव द पावर again you know i ramra i'd love to say i'm the cool guy who's invented this because it makes me sound cool but the reality is it's not true okay it's just that we are not we have not been taught the ancient versions to so, uh, uh, sita ma was deeply intellectual is there in the valmiki ramayana as well uh, sita ma was a, there's a version of the ramayana called the adbhut ramayana i mentioned it earlier jise jiski rachna valmiki ji ne ki thi mm-hmm. jisme do ravan hai और ज्यादा शक्तिशाली रावण बड़ा रावण है ये एल्डर रावण जिसका वध सीता माँ ने किया था अद्भुत रामायण वाल्मीकि जी ने रचना की थी इट वाज कंपोज थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स अगो सीता माँ ने उसका वध किया था ओके तो अगेन आई एम नॉट द वन क्रिएटिंग दिस दिस आर देयर ओके इज जस्ट दैट हमें ये बताया नहीं गया है तो या तो जो अंग्रेजों ने हमें बताया हम वो मान रहे हैं या कुछ जो टेलीविजन सीरियल्स में बताया गया था वो मान रहे देखिए आई एम नॉट बिलिटलिंग टेलीविजन सीरियल्स आई थिंक रामानंद सागर जी डिड अ वंडरफुल जॉब बिकॉज आर एजुकेशन सिस्टम वाज सो कोलोनियल हम तो पूरा भूल जाते कुछ तो याद रहा बिकॉज ऑफ रामानंद सागर जी ही डिड अ वंडरफुल जॉब बट वी नीड टू एक्सप्लोर ऑल दी अदर इंटरप्रिटेशन एज वेल सीता मा वॉज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग टफ वुमन इन माई माइंड शी वॉज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंडियन फेमिनिज्म we've only seen the 1980s television serial so so we think that the docile submissive uh, woman is sita ma no that was not how she was in the mm. in the ancient uh, versions the problem though is the reaction to this should not be what i mean, i'm living in the west right now i'm living in london. i don't know where you live uh, i live in near delhi near delhi okay so i'm living in london right now one of the things i see in the west is because western feminism has swung on the other extreme where it's equated to hating men right that's, that's not the indian approach of feminism that's roughly the extreme version of feminism that is being practiced right now the third wave of feminism that's come around correct and the 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 thing that i see in the west among the lines that i love most of our indian culture is ati sarvatra varjayit it's a sanskrit line it means extremism of any kind should be avoided okay लेकिन वेस्ट में और मिडिल ईस्ट में मैं देखता हूं देयर लाइन शुड वुड प्रॉब्लम बी अति सर्वत्र करता कि एक्सट्रीमिज्म ऑफ एवरी काइंड दे विल डू तो मतलब इफ फेमिनिज्म करना है तो स्विंग कंप्लीटली टू द एक्सट्रीम हेट ऑल मेन एंड देन द रिएक्शन टू फेमिनिज्म इज दिस किलिंग पीपल लिटरली मिसोजिनी दैट आई एम सीइंग नाउ एंड हाउ इज दैट अ फेयर रिएक्शन टू फेमिनिज्म यू नो वेयर and you see some of, and you see that more in the west you don't see it in india and like some of it just shocks me ye, ye, and some some of the way these men are talking about women the way mm. they objectify them is shocking ye kya bakwas bol raha right but you see in the west there they just swing from one extreme to the other and then swing back again and then swing back again because they don't know the concept of balance right mm. our approach is actually about balance so we see if we see sita ma if we approach sita ma from the western lens we want to see only two extremes either she is completely docile submissive will do what uh, whatever she is told to do or on the other hand you know she'll be killing everyone and she'll be losing her temper all the time whereas actually the indian approach is balance right so when dharma had to be followed sita ma followed dharma when she had to fight she fought and she fought hard right that is our uh, approach when characters in the book 
refer to Shiva, hmm. they refer to his Roop, Rudra, which I found very interesting because, I mean, in the models of Melua, it's quite evident that the name Shiva is used. Hmm. And I was wondering how Rudra becomes the god of reverence or like he who is remembered by the characters of, of the Ramayana in, in hmm. your books. Because I know, what I know about Rudra is he, it's his wailing, howling Vala Roop, someone who mm-hmm. drank the poison. In astrology, it's he's known as the Ardhra Nakshatra, right? That kind of thing. So why why was he embedded in these stories? Again, uh, you know, what I said earlier, I try and have interpretations which could connect, you know, facts as I've read in the text. So uh, I'm a Shaivite. I'm a Lord Shiva worshipper. Om Namah Shiva I wear a mask, I wear a Rudraksh, I wear a mask, I wear a mask, I wear a mask, I wear a mask. I'm a very devout Lord Shiva worship. You will see that in the Shiva Bhakti, the Shiva Ji, the Shiva Ji, the Shiva Ji, the Shiva Ji, it is almost like that we demand from the Shiva Ji. Like someone who is from his father, his father, his father, दादा से जो डिमांड करेंगे ना आपको तो ये करना ही पड़ेगा हमारे लिए करेक्ट दैट वी शिव शिव भक्त हैव दिस थिंग कि हम तो शिव जी के बारात हैं आपको हमें संभालना है ओके दैट इज वन एटीट्यूड बट आप देखेंगे कि जो रुद्रदेव की तरफ जो पूजाएं होती हैं इट इज इट ऑलमोस्ट हैज एन एलिमेंट ऑफ फियर कि प्रभु डोंट हर्ट अस ओके इट्स वेरी डिफरेंट राइट and if you see many of the shaivite puranas even the descriptions the actual physical descriptions of lord shiva in his shiva roop is very different from lord shiva in his rudra roop hmm. right? the physical descriptions are almost different and i had read this one hymn in the rigveda called the hymn of kesham to and any shiv bhakt who reads that hymn it will kesham means the long head one theek hai Hmm. and you you read that him and it will you are convinced ki ye to Shivji ki baat ho rahi. okay because he's the long haired one he dances you know brilliantly his fame spreads from the eastern sea to the western sea eastern sea is what we call west uh, bay of bengal our ancestors called in ancient times western sea is arabian sea okay so his you know his followers fame spread from eastern sea to western sea he walked with the sky as his clothes which meant you know no clothes which you know lord shiva did at times uh the interesting thing is the ending of the hymn it says uh, and keshan sat and drank poison we know that we know shivji drank poison keshan sat and drank poison with rudra okay and i was i i read this many years back and i was very intrigued ki bhai are they two different uh, hmm. uh, people now again i don't know what the truth is but i thought maybe one way to reconcile how we devotees actually see lord shiva and lord rudra or the hymn of keshan is could it be that lord shiva and lord rudra were two different beings both of whom were mahadevs okay so existing in parallel truth? at the same ha, time is this the truth i don't know right so uh, i assume this story and that's what i put in the books which is why in the ramchandra series they speak of lord rudra when they speaking of war and lord shiva is different so is this the truth i don't know only lord shiva knows the truth but it's some way to reconcile the hymns of keshan the way we shaivites look at lord shiva and lord rudra differently so what is the role of vishnu in in the books then because it said that uh, rama for example ek passage ke andar likha hua tha ki something about we already kidnapped sita months ago we don't get the we don't get the medicine that we wanted is this what the seven vishnu is capable of something along those lines mm-hmm. and uh, mai bada surprise ho gaya tha ki what i mean i know for a fact that ram was a vishnu avatar but it goes deeper than that so again i'm trying to put that what are the there are various interpretations for what avatar means one is what we have in the modern day well, like what divine also means mm-hmm. uh because in our uh, there are four ways of looking at the divine in the dharmic way one is that uh, uh, the nirgun nirakar concept uh, what's called brahman it's not the caste brahmin that's a mm-hmm. different thing brahman which is nirgun nirakar formless 
Hmm. And then there's a concept of an akar concept of God. God takes a form so that He is closer to us, so we can understand. Nirgun nirakar is very difficult to understand. Right? So, like Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu, Lord Mata, uh, and then there's the avatar concept of God, where God takes a form on Earth in the Maya world, and then does His or her karma and goes back up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fourth is that human beings discover the God within. That's where the concept of Tattva Masih comes in, that you are that, you are God. Right? Uh, so among the things that inspires me is uh, is the fourth interpretation. Uh, because this is something that is very different in the Dharmic way as compared to most other religions. In most other religions, saying, excuse me, saying that you are God is blasphemy. Right? Uh, not in uh, not in dharmic religion, which is Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism. In our way, the way word Namaste means I bow to the divine within you. Hmm. So uh, we have to discover the divine within within us. So could it be that uh, those who we worship as Vishnu's are those who discover the divine within themselves? Again, there's an interpretation that inspires me. So. Okay, I always say, I don't know what is the truth. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I speak of interpretations that, that inspire me. I see. And certainly they raise questions that will at least attract people back to the central books. Because it's only interpretations that, are, that reach far and wide uh, that cause a stir in you and ask you to think about these things. If you're given a rigid interpretation automatically, there is little scope for there is little scope for your imagination to come in and it's what and like i was saying it's what happened to the hellenic greeks and the pharaonic uh, egyptians mm-hmm. you know their interpretations did not update to new times and the religions just died out yeah. talking about a narrative technique specifically jaise aapne yahan pe after starting me mention kar rakha hai main hyperlinking karta hu that is a way i like to tell stories now if you look at like a lot of For example, I also did a podcast with Ashwin Sanghi a while ago. Um, and it seems to me that he also writes that way. Then if you look at some of the best directors today, like Quentin Tarantino, he tells stories in a way where he'll have chapter 37 at the start, then chapter two, then chapter four again, and then this way. Um, beyond your fascination for this, is there a, is there a particular reason why you decided that to linear karne ki bajaya, let's have all of these narratives interspersed together? And do you find that there is any merit to doing this than just taking a standard... you know novel wala approach okay there are there are uh, two things for this because it is a risk to hmm. this hyperlink this thing because it calls for a lot more work from the reader because they have to kind of connect all that but i am lucky that uh, you know that that my readers i think my readers on average are at least so i've been told are a little more intense a little more high iq i think a little more who like to read and think right Mm-hmm. uh and doing that extra work is is fun right it's a lot of extra work for me as an author as well mm-hmm. right but what it does it makes you understand the story a lot deeper because a story has a purpose right it's not just ki bas aap pad rahe ho aur wo you know abhi bhul gaye yaar wo to matlab wo then you can have you know a couple running around trees you know so uh, and, and there there's a place for that too i'm not denying that right. i like a salman khan movie also right mm-hmm. dimag side mein rakho and just enjoy it no harm in that But there are some stories where the hope is actually you will think about it, right, and that you will hopefully learn something. And I think in today's day, you know, this assumption that uh, that many make, many publishers. I had actually been told this by some publishers. You know, that the youth don't really want to think. They have short attention spans. You know, some study was shown to me that apparently the youth have lower attention span than uh, goldfish. You know, and but they are just on the you know that. just want to keep scrolling the instagram thing which i think is silly okay because all of us have various aspects to our to our lives right at sometimes we want to put our brains aside and you know just watch some nonsense sometimes we actually want to be challenged and want to think right uh and i think the way today's youth is that they will either unlike my generation i'm 47 or 48 <laughs> actually now which would give say average attention span to most things right the youth today is either they give you nothing or they give you everything 
Either they will give you precisely, you know, one second, just scroll कर रहे हैं और they will give you an entire weekend. पूरे तीन किताब you know एक साथ पढ़ लेंगे या पूरा series download करके पूरे weekend को binge watch करेंगे ठीक है so they either give you nothing or they give you everything. They will not give everything to something which is completely bri- mindless and brainless. They want something which will actually challenge them. Otherwise, what's the point of giving an entire weekend to it, right? Uh, and i think such a structure makes it that much more interesting because you understand the story a lot deeper think about it this way a story essentially runs on the shoulders of the characters right the characters are the vehicles through which the story flows uh unless you understand each character deeply you don't understand why the story is happening the way it's happening you will think it's just some random incidents it's mm-hmm. not every character has a back story which has built them into behaving in a certain way right the three principal characters of the ramayana are lord ram goddess sita and rama unless you understand the three of them deeply how will you understand the story deeply right mm. so which is what i thought it'll be cool just to have three different back stories you know of of uh, lord ram which is ram sign of ikshvaku goddess sita sita warrior of mithila and ravan Ravan enemy of Aryavarta, and armed with all the three back stories, then you understand War of Lanka, which is the fourth book, the common narrative, a lot better. Is this more work for the author? Yes. Is it more work for the reader? Yes. But they seem to have liked it. It's, I know, it's 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 uh, done very well. Uh, so uh, Ramchandra series, from what my publisher tells me, is the second fastest selling book series ever, next only to the Shiva trilogy. Uh, people, I think. are willing to commit to something if it can really be engaging and and drive conversations that's true i think also it switches you as an author from thinking about writing your novel thinking about writing an episodic saga almost and and that requires like i don't know months of research months of planning yeah. what it, what it certainly does though is i was reading this this book by uh, alan de boton last night about um He was talking about what Proust can teach you. This this other Marcel Proust is is like a old writer philosopher, and he was because Proust would write really long run on sentences, right? Yeah. People would you know make criticisms against him that roughly the story could be told in told in fifteen seconds. The man woke up because he had nightmares and then he slept, but then he wrote like seven hundred pages because he was trying to explain all of the things that happened in between, right? Before that, I was always मेरे को ऐसा लगता था कि यार आदमी को Hemingway की तरह लिखना चाहिए sharp. but then you run the risk of because you write so less mm-hmm. everything has to be squeezed out in a profound manner otherwise, otherwise it's pointless it's almost like there is no hunger for long stories anymore but based on what you said about quote and quote what your publisher told you about the youth this insight also runs true in the way we can consume narratives on youtube because i you know do both things jitne podcast chalte hain utne hi youtube shorts bhi chalte hain if you right. get yeah and and it it shows what this you know this the bias that many people have that the youth today have no attention span that's not true is just that what you happen to put out they may not want to give a weekend to it right mm. but if something can hold their attention like you're very rightly saying that long format uh, you know podcast or youtube you know have tremendous viewerships and you'd think if they have no attention spans why are they spending 2 3 hours on a joe rogan show or you know why because actually that is worth it right uh so it's it truly is today's youth either they give you nothing or they give you everything uh, mm. there is no middle ground uh, with them uh and uh, i guess the challenge for any artist writer you know uh, podcaster is how do you uh, make uh, content that is so high quality that they want to that the youth want to give you everything they want to right. give you an entire weekend mm-hmm. so ab aapne ye char kitab likhi uh there is clearly a kind of transformation that you might have had yourself as you spent time with these stories i mean jo kitabe bani hua lage i'm sure a lot of things were left on the cutting table right mm-hmm. that you edited out as a consequence yeah, has your has your idea of our mythological history has it altered in a certain way other insights that maybe people who cannot read the book just as a weird but who are interested hain wo kya isse gather kar sakte hain i mean i know it's a kind of a hard thing to ask you is like aapne kitab likhi aap hi bata do ki main baat kya hai lekin 
मतलब what do you think your how your understanding of what you know of our mythos how that changed when you when you wrote all four no i i think the best way to answer this is uh, tell you a bit about my background i grew up in a deeply religious family right my, uh, my grandfather was a pandit in uh, kashi at vishwanath right. ji and he used to teach at bhu both my parents are also deeply religious uh, i lost my father last year my mother is still around uh my grandmother on my mother's side was also a teacher so we had that atmosphere in our family of right of a love of knowledge and a love of our traditions so i grew up deeply religious but i would grow up uh believing that that these are that these are nice uh, you know that they are uh, gods these are traditions whether they are real or not i don't know you know and i believe that in college i turned into an atheist i was an atheist for 10 12 years right i've never hidden it i've said it is and, and in the indian way there's nothing wrong with being an atheist it's okay mm-hmm. i mean you can be a hindu and still be an atheist i mean yeah. look at the charvaks Yama schools of philosophy are actually atheist charvaks mimamsa sankhyas they are atheists they don't believe in a creator god but they're all hindu uh bodha jaina there are many other schools in there which are buddhist jain which are actually they don't believe in a creator god that doesn't mean they're not dharmic anyway but coming mm-hmm. back i returned to faith with the process of beginning uh, the writing of immortals of melua my first book and how i feel about our traditions and stories right now because what is the truth after death we'll know only when we die you know uh, is there is there divine are we divine or are the modern scientists right that actually we are just a bunch of chemicals and there's nothing after that god knows we'll only know when we die right mm-hmm. uh we can only believe in theories which give us peace so among the things that gives me peace and i'm i'm so convinced of that i believe in it completely even if i can't prove it is that these stories you know that we are told by ancestors ramayan mahabharat puranas these actually happened i genuinely believe that they are they are not figments of imagination they are our ancestors uh and to me that's a very inspiring thought uh because then that means that all of us in the indian subcontinent not just in india mm-hmm. across the entire greater indian subcontinent we all have uh, the blood of uh, of uh, lord ram lord shiva sita ma fatima they are flowing in our veins we have to be worthy of this blood right we have to conduct ourselves in a manner that we are worthy of being the descendants of of such fine ancestors uh and maybe that is a key thing that has changed me uh that has changed in my approach to our uh, to our tradition i'm not saying others have to follow it mm-hmm. everyone should follow what gives them peace but this is what gives me peace i genuinely believe these stories happen there could there be embellishments to it of course right, right? and some of the versions I and mean, because some of those versions don't seem uh, some of the additions don't seem uh, scientific i mean fire is not going to come out of your palm you know for example right uh, but is there a kernel of true insurance yes i believe that I love that. Um, now you're now that you're in the UK and you are at the Nehru Center uh, of London. Uh, मतलब ये तो एक वो वाली बात है जैसे इंसान जब देश से दूर होता है उसे अपना कल्चर और भी अच्छा लगता है. Um, I just could... <laughs> नहीं हम तो सांस्कृतिक काम के लिए आए हैं यहाँ पे Nehru के अच्छा. एक निर्देशक हैं. तो uh, basically भारत के संस्कृति का प्रचार करना है यहाँ पे. But I have an Indian passport. I'm coming back to India. Right? Okay. अच्छा नहीं नहीं. The reason, I... <laughs> the reason I ask that is because सब लोग आपकी किताबों के बारे में जानते हैं आई थिंक दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ दैट मोस्ट पीपल डोंट नो अबाउट तो मैं थोड़ा जानना चाह रहा था कि व्हाट इज इट दैट यू एग्जैक्टली डू इन द यूके राइट नाउ सो आई एम टेक्निकली अ डिप्लोमेट राइट नाउ सो आई ट्रैवल ऑन दैट रेड डिप्लोमेटिक पासपोर्ट एंड यू हैव द ब्लू नंबर प्लेट कार एज वेल नहीं यार वो नहीं अभी तक वो करता है बट आई हैव आई हैव अ डी आई हैव अ डी नंबर कार Uh, yeah the one with the blue pane on the left and the pure baki number plate right no no that is only for indian government servants in india so okay. a diplomat out here gets a d number plate okay so i have a d number plate in london yeah <laughs> nice but uh, yeah, that's one of the cooler parts of the job so uh, essentially what the british council is in india uh, mm-hmm. for the uk the nehru center is for india 
uh, you know, in the UK. So we uh, we promote Indian culture out here. This is the largest Indian cultural center anywhere in the world. Uh, so of course in the larger UK, but London is also a truly global city. So if you impact things in London, you impact much of the larger uh, West Correct. as well. So uh, and uh, these are uh, activities that serious countries take up. Uh, and India is a serious country now. We're a you know three and a half trillion dollar economy. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, so you aim to build your soft power as well. So essentially, Nehru Center works on that, talking of Indian culture, the Indian narrative uh, you know, in the UK and the larger West. And I'm the director of the Nehru Center. And uh, along with that, I'm Minister of Culture and Education at the Indian High Commission to the UK. So that's my role. That's the second job that I do besides writing. I also host documentaries. So I've, we've just released uh, two documentaries and on Discovery TV. Mm -hmm. I did a documentary with them for Legends of the Ramayana, uh, which was essentially a travelogue from Ayodhya to Lanka. You guys should see that. It's very well produced. Discovery TV, very professional documentary. And the other is A Journey of India, which was held by Amitabh Bachchan, the full uh, series. And then we had different hosts for different episodes. So uh, Kajol did the one for entertainment. Uh, I think Vikas Khanna for food. I did the one for spirituality. So I'm hosting documentaries as well. So the days are packed. I'm very busy. <laughs> but it seems like all of them are very exciting projects. Like I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that at some point, maybe you had no idea that this would become your life. But it's clearly nice to see that you fit all these roles and do justice to all of them. Thanks, my friend. Thanks, thanks, Vinay. Huh. And absolute pleasure uh, chatting with you, man. Likewise, likewise. People can follow you on Author Amish. Is that the official handle? Everywhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. On Twitter, I'm at Author Amish. On Instagram, I'm at Author Amish. On Facebook, I'm at Author Amish. My website is Author Amish. I'm nothing if not consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely. Like I said, this was this was a podcast in the making for several years because I just, when I first Immortal to Malua, you opened a gateway to to Shiv and 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 other people in the in the mythos that I could not access before. And thank you so much for everything that you do. I hope you keep writing books and uh, I'm always rooting for you. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, my friend. I love the paintings on the side. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you Take so much. Office. Yeah. Uh, all right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.